Africa. Welcome everybody who's here. So excited about today's word. It's going to keep your hope alive. It's going to excite you. It's going to refresh you. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you that the entrance of your word brings light and it gives understanding to the simple. Thank you for the truth that you are teaching us because your word says that when we know the truth, the truth shall make us free. And every time we hear truth, every time our spirit is fed on truth, we are set free. Thank you, Lord, for this morning and this time we are here together. Thank you for everyone who's listening right now on the live broadcast and all those who listen after that they will be very blessed with the truths that you're bringing to our hearts. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> In your name I pray. Amen. So. Today, I'm talking about the goodness of God. And <laughs> I think, because I talk about the goodness of God, I don't know, I'm like, Jesus, is that why I'm so happy? Because eh, God is so good. And um, today, I just wanted to talk about the goodness of God. I've sort, it, it sort of became not like a series, but I just ended up talking about different characters and traits of God. And the first time I started, I think I talked about the mercy of our God. And then last week I talked about the faithfulness of our God, trusting our God, what it means to trust God, that you think about his character, his perception and his reputation in your eyes. And that will help you and will build the trust that you have in him. And then today I'd like to talk about the goodness of our God. Um, so how did this, co no, so how did this conversation start? Um, so yesterday, um, I was, have you ever, let me first ask a question before I share my story. So have you ever been in that situation where, let's say you're believing for something particular, right? And then you go to the scripture and to the Bible and you're looking for scriptures that tell you like, let me say peace. Hmm? You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is headed you. Great peace, have those who love your Lord, nothing causes them to stumble. So you go and start looking for scriptures for that one thing, right? Because you want that truth of that thing to enter and enter and enter so that you stand on it. The thing of what is written about, <clears throat> about this situation that I'm going through. And so that's what happened to me. Um, this particular time, very recently, I was looking for victory. Right. I, I wanted to see, I wanted to find out what God, what do you say about me having victory? Me having victory. What do you say about me having victory? And so I, I, I sit down and I just say, you know what? Holy Spirit, help me to find the scriptures. You understand? Before I start even Googling victory scriptures or like going to you version and typing in scriptures, I don't know. I said, you know what? Ah, Holy Spirit, tell me, tell me, then I move. One of those days where you wake up and you and you sort of read the Bible freestyle without like a formula of, I mean, this book, what, what, what. So I wake up and I'm like, I, victory, 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 victory. Today is mine. And so I start. Um, and I'm there. I'm not loading. That's good. I'm like, Gag. at least God drop for me one cast scripture in my head. As in, I want some, you know, some... Like, I, I remember if I, in fact, God was delaying to answer. Do you know what I did? I went aside looking for scriptures of God fighting, how he fought for people. Oh, what, 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 bitch? Ah, uh, and I'm looking for what? Victory Chronicles. Eh? Do you understand? Eh? What? Then he fought for them and they won the battle. Ah, uh, so the things are not shifting. You know, when you're forcing it, things don't shift. So I'm reading these stories, they're not shifting. Ah, I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me just be praying and see what happens. Remember, my agenda was God give me victory scriptures. Like, let's smash this thing. Like, I don't want to be anxious anymore in this area. And so I'm there, and then I just get a sense to go to Romans chapter 8. Oh, Romans chapter 8. Now, what I really know, at least me, what I know so far about Romans 8, I know that beginning parts, smile, there's no condemnation, what, what, what. Then I also know those ending parts of, about what shall separate us, smile, shall try up, tr peril, what, what, what. I'm like, okay, let me just go and see, like, really, I am not feeling this just good. I thought you were going to give me some scripture, some banging hot fiery things. But let's just go and see what Romans chapter 8 has to say. Anyway, I just go read it. I start from the beginning. I'm like, okay. Okay, let me just read. Let me just read. Let me just read. I read, I read. And then I get to Romans chapter 8, verse 31. 
Hmm? You know that last part. And so, I read. <clears throat> what then shall, shall I say to these things? If God is for me, right? Now, this is, this is, this is, this is the personalized verse. So I said, if God is for me, who can be against me? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for me, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Then I first continued, what, 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 reading. You know when you're looking, like in your head, you're good telling you something, but you're, read, you're looking for, uh, like I want you to give me something where you fought out. Ah, I read it, I go to the end, right up to the end. Then I go back, says read it again. I say, okay, what then shall we say unto these things? Romans chapter 8 from verse 31 to 32. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for me and for you, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? And so God, God um, I don't like to say God told me, it sounds, but let me say, so I got the sense to answer that question. So the Holy Spirit was like, yeah, answer that question. If I could give my beloved son, how can I not give you victory? I'm like, okay. No, answer. And you're looking for what? Banging scriptures of... I'm like, okay. If I could give, if I could not spare my beloved son, what about victory? What about abundance? What about success and, and prosperity and all these things that I've promised you? If I could not spare my only beloved son. You see, the thing is, Jesus was God's beloved son. He wasn't some random spare part. Do you understand? Some random kiddo, he got there in heaven and said, you go and first die for these guys. So I said, answer that question. And as I thought about it, I thought about it. I was like, you know what? God gave me his beloved son. God gave you his beloved son. How can he withhold anything else? How can he withhold anything else from you? And that is the basis of our conversation today. That God gave his most prized possession. How can he withhold anything else from you? What is that thing? For me, it was victory in my family in a particular area for you it could be something else what is that thing that you think god is not able to do and yet in his big gigantic love he gave his only begotten son and so i stopped right there i said okay let me dwell on this a bit and that's where I packed my bus, where I was busy. He was like, no, it's not about, he was like, Solomon, it's not about looking for banging. Okay, it's good to know the battles have won and the victories have won and the good thing. But I want you to understand my nature. First leave, first leave these chronicles and these banging guys and all the wars have won. Okay, you won victory, good. But first I want you to understand how I feel towards you. Today, I want you to come to the realization that God is good and God does good. Two things. God is good and God does good. So, while we are waiting on God, while we are asking god for these things while we are knocking and i want you to come to the realization of, of these two things that the person that we are depending on one is good and secondly he does good so it's not just about knowing god what are you going to do for me okay because that's the combat mode that i entered you know i was looking for victory scriptures i wanted to see only where god fought what he won battles also me he can do it for me i was like no 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 first of all understand that i am good then understand that I also do good. So two things. I am good and I do good. I want to give you this illustration. The illustration that comes to my mind. So here you are. Some of us here may be parents. Or you may not be a parent but you provide for a certain child, right? So imagine you're waking up here. It's a Wednesday morning. You're going to work. What, what? You're probably sitting in traffic. You're making ends meet. 
Why? You're saving up and building up a, a, a chip base for your child. You're investing for your child. You're, you're thinking about your child's future in Cambridge. You're thinking about your child's future in Harvard. You're thinking about what? You're thinking about providing the best in the home for your child and all those good things, right? So you have these good gigantic plans eh? and you're sacrificing for that, right? And then your child wakes up and comes peeping at your door begging for some drinking water. Like, mommy, could you, if you could, in your, in your, like, could you please kindly, um, um, help me with some drinking water? Meanwhile, here you are. You have given your best. Your thoughts towards this child of yours are so good. You're planning ahead of them. You're thinking, how do I, how do I educate them to get their best? You're, so, that this child thinks you cannot give them drinking water? And they have to come and first beg? And kneel down. That is what I was doing. And that is what God stopped and asked me. said, if I could not spare my son for you. Verity, Bella, Patricia. If I could not spare my son for you. What can't I do? What, 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 do you, what is that thing that you think I can't do? I need you to understand that beyond me doing good for you, I am good. It's not just about God doing good. He is good. And he has demonstrated his perfect and ultimate goodness and intention towards you. By giving you his best gift. Are you understanding me? He has demonstrated his perfect love and goodness and mercy and kindness towards you. By giving you his best. How can he not give you some drinking water? Drinking water in this case is abundance over victory in your marriage, over victory in your friend, your relationships. I don't know what. How can he not give you that? And yet he says, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And here you are. I have given you my son. I want you to stop and realize my child today that I will stop at nothing to bless you. I will stop at nothing to fulfill my word to you. And that you must always remember because I have given you my best. I have given you the ultimate best. There is nothing that you will ever ask me for that is too hard for me to do. Because the thing that would have been the hardest, I already did. I've already sacrificed. I've already given. I'm, I'm going back to now this parent. I'm already toiling and I don't know what to educate you. And you think I cannot bless you with drinking water? The thing that you think is the biggest, it cannot compare to Jesus. The victory that you're looking for, the blessing over what, the, 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 the wisdom, the direction. The, I am thinking good thoughts towards you and I have good plans for, towards you. And not just that, I am good. Some A verse that I came across some time back, I'd like to read it for us today. It says, Zechariah chapter 8. Verse 15. I saw this and I was so amazed. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 15. So again in these days, I am determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not fear. If you go and read the story of uh, the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah and I think Ezra. <coughs> I believe it was prophet Ezra. They, they came up. Yes. Mm, I might be. I think it's Ezra. You should go and read about him. I read it about uh, some time back. But those prophets came to encourage Zerubbabel who was rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem and to encourage him that build, keep building. And if you read those two prophecies, they're almost similar. And so Zechariah came and was telling these guys that continue to build because the God that you're serving, the God who is on your side is determined to do good to you. So I want you to put your name today. Claire, I am determined to do good to you. Do not fear. Margaret, I am determined to do good to you. Do not fear. Solomon, I am determined to do good to you. Do not fear. Patricia, I am determined to do good to you. Do not fear. Why? I already did the best that I could ever do. And Jesus should be a picture of us that there is nothing that God can withhold from us. There is absolutely nothing. That victory that I was looking for so desperately God say just look to my son look to my son and come to the realization that I have done everything that I will ever do and so there is no amount of thing or victory or abundance or provision or thing that you will ever need <clears throat> that I will not give you because I've already given you my best 
James chapter 1 verse 17 every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning every good and perfect gift comes from above and from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning understand that God does good everything good is directed towards you God's intention towards you is good he is determined to bless you I want you to leave this broadcast today knowing that God is determined to do good to you 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 may get tired you you may fall short you you may get you may make mistakes you you may veer off the track you you may make i don't know what disappoint yourself over what but god is determined to tell you and remind you today that he's determined to do good to you every good gift that he has given you comes from above and it comes down from the father of light with whom there's no variation or shadow of turning you will live here today knowing that god will do good to you God wants to do good to you. God wants you to wake up and say today is a good day because I am thinking good thoughts towards you because I am thinking about you. I'm thinking how do I load you with benefits? I'm thinking how do I bless the works of your hands? I'm thinking how do I make good come to you? I'm thinking how your favor has surrounded you as a shield. Today I want you to know that God is stopping at nothing to do good to you. He will stop at nothing to do good to you. Guys, Psalm 103 verse 5, it says, Who satisfies my mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? Who satisfies your mouth with what? With good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I kept thinking about this parent-child illustration that I shared. And I was like, you know, Solomon, what would make up a child not realize that their parent is determined to bless them? And the first reason I thought about and I have been thinking about is that the reason a child would come and beg their parent for water is because they do not know the big and great plans that the parent has for them. And yet, guess what? Our Father God has said, I want these people to absolutely remember and come to the realization that I have good plans for them. He says in Jeremiah 20, line 11, that for I know the plans that I have for you, Patricia. I know the plans that I have for you, Ivy. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Plans to... I know the plans I good I have towards you. Plans to prosper you, yes, and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. And so you're saying, I want you to know that every day of your life I'm plotting goodness. Every day of your life, God is plotting goodness. Every day of your life, he's thinking, how do I load you with benefits today? Would you recognize today that God is determined to bless you? He is determined to do good to you. Not because I've excelled at you guys. It's not because of our faithfulness. It's not because of my goodness, but because of his goodness. And now he has said, I will make my child know the plans. Maybe if they know the plans that I have, they'll continue trusting and remembering that no matter what comes, this God is determined to bless me. And today I'm here to remind you of Jeremiah 29, 11, that a number of you may know but have forgotten that every day of your life is written. He has plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. God is determined to bless you. All the days of your life were written in his book when as yet there were none of them there is no day in your life that is a mistake you are not living here today discouraged you're not living here today um let down you're not living here today with a low countenance because every morning he daily loads you with mercy you have to walk in victory because it is your portion god is determined to bless you god is determined to do good to you god is determined to bless you to daily load you with benefits every good gift is yours every blessing is yours walk with that knowledge walk with the fact and knowledge that your parent your father has plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a future and a hope that is what i'm here to encourage you today about god is good and god does good god is good and god does good god is good and god does good he doesn't just do good also know that he is good he did not spare anything he did not spare his son he did not spare anything he gave the ultimate sacrifice how can he not give you victory in your marriage how can he not give you abundance in your finances how can he not bring the right relationships your way how can he not bless the, your path how can he how it cannot happen why because he already 
already did the best. He already did the best. And so today I want to encourage you. Today I want you to live knowing that all God's good thoughts are towards you, one person. All God's good, every gift, every gift, every good gift is towards you. He wants to bless you. He is determined to, go, to do. I like that word. He is determined to do good to you. If I, it encourages me. Why? Because it's like, you know what? Even when I feel like he didn't want, over what? My mood changes. Bichy, bichy. No, me, I am going to love you. I'm going to do good to you. I'm going to keep doing good to you. Even on the days when you don't feel like it. Even on the days when you feel like you have a let hood down. You know those days... Me, I am going to do good to you. I am determined to do good to you. That is your father. That is your father. God is determined to do good to you. <clears throat> I want you to live with that chant or that mantra or that hashtag that God is determined to do good to me. God is determined to do good to me. Say it out loud right now wherever you are that God is determined to do good to me. God is good and he does good. He is determined to do good to me. God, you are good and you do good. You are determined to do good to us. God, you are good and you do good. You are determined to do good to us. Not because of your faithfulness, but because of his. Because there is no word that is that he has ever spoken that he will not fulfill he is more determined to bless you than you they can understand as in he is determined I mean, not that over what he is determined to do good to you you will you have days where you are real feeling fake but he is determined to do good to you you have days where you are not feeling the fire but he is determined to do good to you you have days when you make mistakes when you make outright foolish mistakes but even on that day he is determined to do good to you good is just the, it's the only thing that he can do he can be he can have you understood you guys i have made my point today you need to live here knowing that God is determined to do good to you. Not because of your goodness, but because of his. Because when we remove our focus from ourselves and we focus on him, and there we can stand because God is dependable. He has been faithful for generations from Abraham. He has been keeping his word from all those generations, all those generations. So that one you can depend on. Me, I can't depend on myself. Why? Because I make, sometimes I make promises and I don't keep them. Even when I didn't intend. But guess what? That is the, that is the, <coughs> the problem with depending on man or depending on myself. And so guys, depend on the one who has been faithful for generations. Is the one saying, I am determined to do good to you. Expect good realize that it's not just him he's also good like do you understand it like you guys yes you're on his mind every second every minute every day every month every hour he's thinking how to bless you he's thinking how to extend good things towards you god is determined god is determined